I'd like you to start by imagining that this humble device was harnessing quantum mechanics to monitor your state of health and then to securely communicate uh, with your doctor also harnessing quantum physics and that your doctor would then prescribe you a new drug that has been designed on a quantum simulator and that his diagnosis was informed by a quantum computer. Now that uh, future and a whole lot more is potentially soon possible. So as bizarre as quantum physics is, it turns out to be the basis of some incredibly disruptive quantum technologies. And what I'd really like to emphasise today is that these technologies are emerging from the research lab. So at the University of Bristol, we're working with a large range of organisations to develop these quantum technologies that will have profound impacts on all of our lives, societies and economies. These will occur in four main areas. The first is in security. So probably all of you have wondered about how secure your mobile phone is when you log into your bank or you buy something online with it. Well, working with our colleagues at Nokia, we've developed a secure communication system that would allow your handheld device to communicate with your bank teller machine. And the way that works is that you and your bank encode your information in single particles of light, single photons, and the laws of physics demand that if anyone extracts some information from that transition, that will disturb those single photons and you and your bank can detect that. The second area is in sensors which are becoming ubiquitous in transport, environmental monitoring, security and healthcare. And it turns out that if you want those sensors to be as precise as they possibly can to make their measurements most precisely, then you need to harness this bizarre properties of quantum physics. Already we have been able to measure the concentration of a blood protein using this bizarre state of entangled photons and that's a really key step to making this into a practical technology. And so the third area is in uh, designing new materials, new clean energy devices and new pharmaceuticals. So probably many of you are aware that it takes of order a billion dollars and 10 years to bring just a single new drug to market. And a big part of the reason for that is that it's impossible on a, on a normal supercomputer to be able to simulate the molecules uh, at the heart of that. So working with our colleagues at Harvard, we've developed a new, very efficient quantum algorithm for doing such a simulation, and we've been able to simulate the helium hydride molecule to within chemical precision. So that's the precision that you need if you're able to do something useful with that knowledge. And the final area is in quantum computers that offer exponentially greater power for some important tasks. For example, quantum machine learning would use artificial intelligence type approaches to address what would otherwise be impossibly large data sets. And this has applications uh, across all sorts of things, ranging from email filters um, through to online shopping, face recognition, training driverless cars, and the list goes on. We've developed a technique at the University of Bristol for using photons in waveguides on a chip and the important point here is that we're guiding those photons around in silicon waveguides on the nanometer scale and this is precisely the same architecture that the conventional computer chip industry is using so they have ambitions to replace all of the copper wires that we currently have in computer chips with these sort of photonic wires. Now apparently Seymour Cray when he was told that Apple had bought a Cray supercomputer to design the next Apple said, that's funny, I'm using an Apple to design the next Cray. <laughs> and uh, perhaps you would all like to uh, think about how you might use a quantum computer uh, to design the next Apple, to design some new medicine, uh, etc. <clears throat> now, the really good news here is that uh, you can start 
you can start trying your hand at this already. So just, uh, just last week, we've made uh, one, of, one of these devices available online on the quantum cloud. And if you log into that email address there, you can start programming a small scale photonic quantum processor. And I encourage you to have a look at doing that. And there's some tutorials along with it that should explain how you can go about doing that. So finally, I'd like to acknowledge the European Research Council who've made all of this possible and leave you with a message that quantum technologies are arriving now. And my question for, 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 for you is, uh, what, you know, what would you like to use these technologies for? I really want to hear what your problems are because that's, that's my main reason for being at this, at this forum here is to find out amongst all the applications that I've just touched on, and there are more, wh where, where do you see your business being affected? How would you like to apply these things? Thank you.